Hey guys, this is Logic Crazy, and I am Jonathan, and welcome to yet another advanced Java Chess Engine tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be learning about how to implement the principal variation search algorithm into code. In the previous tutorial, we discussed how it was invented and how it basically works at a theoretical level, but in this tutorial, I want to actually get down to how do we actually write this out in Java. And to get started, I've written three methods which are necessary for a principal variation search. There's actually more, which we will not have time to discuss. Uh, one of them being uh, transposition tables and the other being iterative deepening, which are pretty much necessary to get any real benefits out of principal variation search. But those we'll leave for another time. So we have these three methods. We have the principal variation search method, which is the main method, obviously. Then we have this method called get first legal move. And that basically just looks through all the moves in our move string and finds the first one after which its own king is not in check. So the first of the moves that isn't illegal. And then we have our zero window search, which is going to be discussed in the next tutorial. And basically, it just an quickly analyzes the, uh, does a quick search to decide if it produces a beta cutoff. But we'll discuss that in detail in the next tutorial. So let's get into this principal variation search method. Now what I have done here is we have a couple integers off the start. We have a best score. Now what this will keep track of is whichever move that we've so far found that has been the best, we record its score to measure whether following moves are better or worse than that so far best move. Then we also have the best move index. Now this is the index that says which move produced this best score. Was it the first one we found, the second, or the third, or the fourth, and so on. And I've set so far a negative one to represent that uh, no move was the best. Uh, after that, we have this little if the depth if is the uh, maximum search depth we're going to. So if we've already reached the maximum depth we're searching, then we can uh, set the best score to whatever we evaluate that position to be and return it. <clears throat> and it's just that simple. We could have just said return uh, rating dot evaluate, but I've written it this way for uh, future tutorials. Anyway, after that, this if statement, what we do is we come up with a list of all the moves. Then later on, we will learn to sort those moves based on how good we think they'll be, from best to worst. And then we figure out what's the first legal move that is in our list. Now normally it'll be just the first move, but on the off chance that it isn't, uh, we have to uh, come up with this first legal move. And uh, if it isn't, if this off chance is true, then we know that, um, and if this first legal move returns negative one, that would mean none of the moves are legal. There is no first legal move, and therefore we know we're in a checkmate or a stalemate position. And then if it is white's turn to move, we will return uh, a mate score, so really big number meaning checkmate, or if it is black's turn, we will return a really small number meaning uh, black checkmated. Um, assuming that there is a first legal move, we make that move using this code which we've been using in perfed and all over the place, and uh, that's just this big section of code which should look very familiar to you. And then we come up with, we evaluate the position. So we've made this first move, and now we do a complete search, which is the principal variation search with the uh, parameters of beta and alpha. So basically, negative beta, negative alpha, these are setting um, our uh, two values within which the score must be. Um, the first one being the, it has to be at least this good, and the second one being uh, this would be too good to be true sort of value. And uh, 
if it's too good to be true, then it probably is. And we also have to switch white to move, and we have to increase the depth by one. Otherwise, we'll never achieve a maximum depth in this uh, algorithm will run forever. Then we have this little move counter, which we add one to, just to keep track of how efficient our searching is. So if we come up with new methods and the move counter decreases, then we go, oh, we did a good job. We Something was improved. And uh, obviously, if it decreased, if it gets worse, then we know we should undo what we were trying to accomplish. Then what we do is we say, if this score generated by principal variation search is a mate score, so if this move produces checkmate, then we can immediately return it. No point searching any further, because this is obviously the best or the worst move. But if the move best score is greater than alpha, that means it's an improvement based on uh, previous moves we've looked at. And if it's too good to be true, if it's greater or equal to beta, then we return it as we return this move as the best score. Otherwise, if it's not too good to be true, but it's better than previously found, then we set alpha to be best score. So we increase alpha. And slowly, as this algorithm continues to run, alpha will start increasing in size, and beta will start decreasing in size until the two sort of meet in the middle and something is returned. Then what happens is we set our best move to the first legal move. Obviously, so far the best move has been the only move searched. So this statement uh, should make a lot of sense. So now what we've so far done is we've just searched the first move that we thought would probably be the best. We found all the moves. We figured out what the first legal move was. We made it. And we came up with a score and we call it the best score so far. All right, and we change alpha and beta based on the results as well. Now what we're gonna do is go through all the other moves using this for loop, starting at the first legal move and going through, so all subsequent moves, and <clears throat> we are going to, uh, I should actually say, first legal move plus four uh, would make a lot more sense because we don't want to, again, search that first legal move. So we search all subsequent moves, and this time we'll just search using the quick and dirty zero window search, which was that top method that I talked about briefly, which we'll discuss in detail in the future. So we go through each one of these, and we have this integer score, which will represent the current moves uh, evaluated score. Then we increase the move counter and we make the move, which is all this code, whoops, uh, all this code right here. And then we set the score just to zero window search. So this looks very similar to what had happened above, where we had made the move and then we set the score to principal variation search. The only difference here is this search now takes a whole lot less effort for the computer. It'll be much quicker. And if the score is a good move, basically, if it's better than a previous move, but not too good to be true, such as throw the opponent throwing away a queen or something, then we have to do a full search because we realize this might be a candidate for the best move. So we do a complete search. Um, and then if the score is better than alpha, so if it's better than the best move found so far, basically, then we set the best move index to the current move and we increase the best move so far, this alpha value. However, perhaps none of this, perhaps the move wasn't a candidate and then none of this big principal variation search will happen. It was either too good to be true or it was worse than previous moves, and this whole lengthy line of code will be uh, omitted. And if this score 
is either a null int or if the score is greater than the best score, then what we can do is say if it's too good to be true, if it produces a cutoff, then return the score. And otherwise, set the best score to the current score. And if the score is a mate, obviously we can end. Wherever we find mate, we just end, even if we're not at the full depth, because obviously there are no moves following a checkmate. So that's just why that's there. It just makes it a little quicker. And then at the very end here, we return the best score that's found so far, <clears throat> just in case none of these others returned. It's possible to skip all these uh, returns, and so we have to return something, so at the end here, we just return the best score. So that's just a real quick overview, and if you didn't fully uh, watch my previous tutorial, this one might be going through a little too quick and too complicated, so make sure you watch that previous one to fully understand this. And there's a lot of online documentation to really get into it, but that is basically how I have implemented this principal variation search. So just in summary, what we've done is we find out the first legal move, we make that move, we adjust alpha and beta according to what we found the score to be, then we set the best move and the best score to be so far found to be from that first move, and then we go through all the other moves we have this for loop for all the other moves which we assume aren't going to be as good and we make those moves and we just do a quick search just to test the waters to see if it looks like it actually is a good move if it actually looks like hey this move might actually be decent then we do a complete search so you end up searching some things twice however and hopefully more likely that move the following moves will be worse or too good to be true and therefore we can quickly skip them and where and then we avoided a lengthy complete search as well in this algorithm I have said wherever there is a mate score just right away return that value we don't need we can't search any further than a checkmate or a stalemate because that is the last move in a game. So that is just the quick overview of our principal variation search, and we will be working and adding a lot more content in the future. So make sure you understand this, because it's foundational for the tutorials to come. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and until next time, enjoy Java.